Disclaimer, these videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Kurna, located in Kurna, southern Iraq, and involving elements of the United Kingdom, India, and the Ottoman Empire on December 3rd to the 9th, 1914. After the successful taking of Basra just a few days earlier, General Sir Arthur Barrett was concerned about securing the area from possible Ottoman counterattack. He noted that the retreating forces of the Ottoman Colonel Subi Bey and his troops had set up 50 miles upriver in Kurna on the junction of the Euphrates and Tigris River. Barrett received word that the Turkish military was not going to leave and decided that he would send two battalions of British and Indian infantry, the 104th Wellesley Rifles and 110th Maharada Light Infantry, along with a doubled company of soldiers from the Norfolk Regiment. In total, this comprised about 2,100 troops along with a flotilla of gunboats. The force left on December 3rd, and by early December 4th, they had reached their target. Heading towards the town of Kurna, the British and Indian forces tried a dual attack. The gunboats were on their own mission, and as they crossed into the Euphrates River, they began to bombard the Turkish positions. Meanwhile, the British and Indian infantry began to approach the town on foot. As the British and Indian forces crossed the Tigris, the infantry slammed into the Turkish artillery batteries on the east side of the Tigris River from Korna. Once they had secured the artillery position, the British found themselves wrecked by Turkish fire from the town of Korna itself. The British forces retreated back and regrouped when they couldn't find a way to cross the river and enter Korna itself. On December 6th, the British attacked again, this time with the rest of the Norfolk Regiment, the 7th Rajputs, and the 120th Infantry. They found the Turks had already rebuilt the defenses of the artillery battery, it took most of the morning for the British to retake the battery site. Once again, though, they could not find a way to cross the river, and after a day of being fired at by the Turks, they retreated. On December 8th, Bear ordered the 104th and 110th Infantry up the Tigris to find a place to cross. They did this quickly, and by accident, they successfully cut off the Ottomans in Kurna from escape. This was done while Kurna was under fire by the British gunboats. After a long day of artillery bombardments, the British pulled back to prepare the attack the next day. Later that evening, the Ottoman forces sent a steamer down the river, alerting the British to their presence, and that they wanted to talk. Lieutenant Commander Wilfred Nunn of the gunboat Espiegel met with the steamer and demanded an unconditional surrender. By late evening, the Ottoman officers agreed, and the entire force of defenders, under Colonel Subi Bey, surrendered to the British and Indian soldiers the next morning. The British and Indian forces suffered approximately 280 casualties. This included 30 dead and 250 wounded, while the Ottoman Turks surrendered 1,031 men, including officers, the count of the dead was never given for the Ottomans during the fight. Please join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.